Right now, thousands of websites, maybe even yours, are vulnerable to one of the simplest hacks out there. No brute forcing, no zero day magic, just plain neglect. And with it, criminals can hijack part of a site and make it their playground. This has burned companies like Uber, Starbucks, Shopify, many others. And it's made some bug bounty hunters thousands of dollars. This attack is called a subdomain takeover. And today we're gonna break it down step by step so that you can hunt them too. Here's why this attack is so dangerous. Most people know to check the padlock, the domain, the HTTPS certificate. If it says shop.com, it must be correct, right? It must be safe. Well, wrong. Because if a forgotten subdomain is pointing to a service that no longer exists, criminals can swoop in and claim it. Visitors can see shop.com in the URL bar, but behind the scenes, that subdomain belongs to someone else entirely. It's the perfect mix of stealth and trust. And that's why companies pay out when hunters find them. Think of it like a phone number. A company cancels the phone contract, but their telephone number is still on their websites, it's on adverts, it's on billboards. And if someone else registers that exact number, every call meant for that company goes straight to them. Same digits, different owner. And in this case, same domain, different owner. Let's break it down. Company creates a subdomain like promoshop.com and points it to a resource, maybe a S3 bucket website or a GitHub project, maybe a Shopify store. After a while, that runs its course and they shut down that project, right? So they, they kill that site. They forget to remove the DNS entry. So that subdomain is now dangling, pointing at nothing. And a criminal or a bug bounty hunter claims that abandoned resource and suddenly promo.shop.com is fully under their control. From here, the possibilities are endless. Host phishing sites, uh, steal cookies, drop malware downloads, or just embarrass the brand with defacement. And this isn't just theory. Bug bounty reports have shown big names have been caught out. Uber had subdomains hijacked and used for phishing. Starbucks had dangling DNS records reported in bug bounties. Shopify too. In some cases, hunters walked away with payouts in the tens of thousands. And if criminals had gotten to it first, it could have been a lot worse. So let's have a look at some of these tools that we use for finding these dangling subdomains. The first one up is Subsy. We are running this against a list of subdomains that we've already found with other tools such as AMAS or Subfinder or whatever your asset discovery pipeline is. Um, we've also asked it to hide fails. Now, it's already found a bunch of vulnerabilities apparently. These are dangling subdomains that point to the Cargo Collective. Now, the issue here with Subsy is that it will often report Cargo Collective as being vulnerable. 99.9% .9 of the time, I have always found these to be false positives. It's my one downside of running Subsy is it will often pull up these Cargo Collective as being vulnerable when actually it's, it's not. Um, so I wouldn't really waste your time if you see this coming up. If anything else comes up though, definitely dig into it. Uh, especially if it's one of those services that we've mentioned already. Um, but if it's Cargo Collective, I think you can safely ignore that. Now, I'm going to kill this one because it's going to take a while to run against these uh, 1900 subdomains. The next tool on our list is Nuclei. Um, we are going to run it against the same set of subdomains, so about 1900 of them. The great thing with Nuclei is you can specify specific templates. In this case, we're using the, uh, the flag hyphen tags and then only loading templates that have the tag of takeover. So this is only going to load around 80 templates that currently have subdomain takeover-ish type um, things that it's looking for. So now we're going to let this run for a little bit. Um, Nuclei always takes up a little bit of time to get started, um, just checking that everything is there and then it is going to start checking against these templates. So any second now it's going to start running, but I think we will skip forward a bit and I'll see you when it's got some results. So here we have some results now from Nuclei. As you can see, it's found a bunch of dangling C names. Um, the bad news is, for us at least, is that none of these are going to be really vulnerable. These are just suggestions that you go and look at. Um, you know, it's pointed out stuff like this bizarrevoice.com. You can't take over from that as far as I'm aware. Um, Jive software you also can't take over as far as I'm aware. 
a lot of you may have got excited seeing the Amazon AWS stuff. Um, this ELB is not the same as an S3 bucket. This is the elastic load balancer, and you can't you can't sort of create names around that as easy as you could with S3 buckets, for example. So there's nothing here really for us this time. I just want to show you the differences between uh, subsea and nuclei. So there's a couple of tools to get you started with bug hunting for those subdomains. So what services do I see showing up again and again in real world takeovers? Well, Amazon S3 buckets, that's the big one. Azure app services, GitHub pages, Heroku apps, Shopify shops and old WordPress hosting setups. They're probably the most common ones I think we see. If you see a subdomain pointing to one of these and the resource doesn't exist anymore, your hunter senses should be tingling. Let's get clear on what criminals do with these. They don't just deface the pages, that's script kiddie amateur hour. They use the trust of the brand for real damage, right? Imagine hosting a phishing login portal to tricks customers or even employees or putting on silent JavaScript payloads to steal cookies and session tokens, hosting malware payloads that look like legitimate downloads, or spinning up full fake sites under the trusted domain. And all of it gets a free pass from users because the URL looks right. For companies, preventing this is simple in theory, but messy in practice, as it always is with cybersecurity. Always clean up DNS entries when retiring services, automate scans for dangling subdomains, and use bug bounty or pen test programs to get extra eyes on those forgotten assets. Because attackers and hunters will find what you've forgotten. So for bug bounty hunters, subdomain takeovers are prime hunting ground. Learn the tools, practice in your own lab, and get comfortable spotting dangling DNS records. Because sometimes the most profitable bugs aren't hiding in new exploits, they're hiding in plain sight. Go hunt some forgotten domains, and who knows, your next report might be the one that pays out big.